Greetings. Good evening, everybody. I hope everybody has been doing well. I am back from Zambia. Um, I've actually been back for a little while, um, about a month, in fact. But um, I, So I'm finally getting around here to making my next video to closing out my Prepare for War series. Um, I'll do a recap here. But anyways, um, I guess since I came back, I've just been spending a lot of time just kind of decompressing, um, just kind of just meditating and pondering everything God did, you know, and just praising Him for it. It was, it was absolutely amazing, as you would have expected. And I think every, you know, each one of you that prayed about it, that um, helped send me there with your finances, uh, thank you truly from the bottom of my heart. Um, it was an amazing time, and, and God did amazing things. We had over uh, 50 people um, profess salvation in Jesus Christ. So continue to pray for those people that, you know, just the Holy Spirit will guide them into all truth and they'll just hold on to the conviction and, and keep walking in it. Um, we had 20 people healed, uh, many of those just miraculously. We had a lady that had a blood clot in her right eye. Um, she had no vision in the right eye. Um, she was prayed for and healed um, miraculously. Uh, so the verdict is in that uh, it has been in, but God still does miracles. He is a God of miracle. Uh, his name is above all names, and um, you know it says in Mark you will lay hands on the sick. Mark 16 you will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover, uh, not because of you know us, but because um, he gives us power and authority to do these things. Uh, so he says all things will be possible for the one who believes, and we saw it firsthand. So just thank you. Um, it was just amazing to see my team members grow, to, to be grown and stretched, step out of their comfort zone and to do things they hadn't got to do before and you know as servants of the Lord and for his glory so it was amazing just the way this see all the ways we got to minister uh, to the people of Zambia but the Holy Spirit you know the way uh, God ministered to us and, and uh, encouraged us so it was awesome um, I want to apologize because I think the last couple of videos I did um, my microphone wasn't working properly my Bluetooth microphone I think I fixed that now but um last couple of videos my friend told me that he just had to really strain his ears to hear so I hope that didn't ruin the experience for you too much especially on the last one the um, prepare for War part two which was about uh, soldiers versus civilians because that was a really like recent world word I was really excited to do that and so hopefully you were able to hear it um, so um, another thing I want to ask for you to pray for me about is that uh, God has laid it on my heart to write um, and so he's kind of, it's actually, it was prophesied over me some time ago, probably like a decade or more ago, but it's just kind of like, um, I guess things are finally starting to fall into place and um, come to fruition, but um, just pray for me specifically about, because I have so many ideas and places I could start, but just specifically uh, what to write about, because I don't want to write, um, you know, I just want to write what, what God wants me to write, um, what's going to um, give him glory and and help and encourage other people and so um, without further ado I guess I want to do a quick recap um, this before we wrap up this prepare for war series but part one was about uh, knowing the enemy um, just his uh, you know the ways the enemy attacks us how he tries to um, you know strip us of identity or enslave us to sin um, to get us to doubt the promises of God um, that God is with us um, and, and he, you know, he, uh, what his characteristics, I guess, the, his nature, that he is a, a liar, a thief, a murderer, an attempter. And so, um, and then part two uh, was about, like I had alluded to previously, uh, soldiers versus civilians. And so, um, just that um, Christian civilians, we end up becoming. Uh, casualties. We have to be a people who finish, a people who, uh, you know, take hold of the eternal life that we're called to. That understand that Jesus has given us victory. Uh, he's given us. He's given us everything we need to succeed in life. He's with us. He works everything out to our good. Um, so we just have to decide at the outset to be Christian soldiers who are sold out uh, to place the recruiter that have placed their faith in Him, um, and that know that He's going to be with us in whatever He calls us to do and that we ultimately have final victory. Uh, we've already achieved final victory through Jesus Christ who defeated sin and death. So, you know, when you've got that mindset, um, 
you are you're gonna you're gonna be all in you're gonna be sold out and you're not gonna you know walk in fear you're gonna walk in victory um, oh yeah I guess I backtrack a little bit um, but I did um, when I came back from Zambia I wrote a testimonial um, on Facebook I shared it three times I hope everyone's gotten a chance to read that but if you haven't I encourage you to go and see you know how you know just to see and hear uh, the, the testimonies from there and I've written several small excerpts over the last few weeks of just various moments and, and testimonies that um, things that God did you know while we were there and so I hope you've been blessed and encouraged by that if you had a chance to read that if not um, please go back and and read that because it will um, like I said it will bless you and encourage you just this the amazing things God did um, in Zambia but anyways, I guess I want to start this as I always start this before we start part three. Part three is going to be about uh, fighting back against the enemy. And not just fighting back, but uh, prevailing against the enemy. Walking in victory, overcoming uh, the enemy. Because we have, um, it says in Luke 10, in eight, Luke 10, 18, I believe that we have been given all power and authority to trample uh, the snakes and scorpions and all the power of the enemy. So it's how to walk in that and how to be victorious uh, day in, day out. So without further ado, uh, Jesus, we just thank you that you've given us victory, that you have defeated sin and death, and the victory is ours. Uh, help us look, you know, not look behind, but to look ahead to the, uh, to the, the, to the future that we've already achieved victory. We have um, eternal life in you. Just thank you. Lord, I pray that you would give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation that no one's here to hear me, that you would just uh, speak, speak through me and um, just... Help us all to understand what it is to walk with you, to know you, um, to know you're for us and not against us, to know that you're with us, and to know that you uh, you will fight for us. Um, just help us know what it is to put on the armor of God and just to be uh, just uh, resting in your presence and, and knowing that you're fighting for us. Lord, help us uh, know what it is to just to be victorious over the enemy, to walk in the power and authority you've given us. Lord, let us uh, continue to declare your victory. Uh, until you know we, we are all called home uh, just to to you know to declare it uh, over ourselves our families and over others just to uh, shout your victory and, and and your praises thank you Jesus in your holy name amen okay so diving right in um, so there's I guess there's a few different parts of this a big chunk of this is going to be just you know like um, just um, looking at the different parts of the armor of God and how they help us prevail over the power of the enemy but there's like I said there's other things to to walking in victory um, but the first part that I just want to start with is is just we, we just have to, to just understanding who God is um, and, and walking with God it says in Deuteronomy 11 that um, you know it talks about the blessing and the curse um, those who reject God and his ways uh, who walk in uh, wicked deeds and, and wicked thoughts that the um, you know they walk under the you know they labor under the curse uh, it's the curse that we we brought on this world world but um it says those who honor him and keep his commands you know they walk in, in under his banner under his blessing um, he protects the sheep of his pasture and so when we um, you know it says uh, Solomon sums up Ecclesiastes you know that our, our existence is to fear God and keep his commands and so just just walking in that holy fear of God uh, we're not scared of him but it's this holy fear is just this awe and reverence for him you know to fear God is to hate evil to um, our heart begins the more we walk with God we you know it says we conform in the image of Christ and the more we love what he love and hates what he hates um, and we not we're not keeping his commands because we're trying to earn anything because because we know it's by grace through faith um, but it's because the relationship matters to us we want to we don't want to disappoint him we don't want to uh, hurt the relationship because it matters to us and what is pleasing to him should be pleasing to us. Um, and so, but uh, it says in Second Thessalonians 3, 2, that he is faithful. He will guard you and protect you uh, from the evil one. And so those who walk with God, uh, they walk under his banner, under his protection, under his blessing. And, um, you know, just understanding also that uh, God is victorious. He rules over all creation. He has give, already given us the victory in Jesus Christ. He's given us all power and authority um, to prevail against the enemy. So we just have to understand that and submit and walk in it. You know, it says in Exodus uh, 14, 14, you know, that the Lord will fight for you. You need only be still. 
So we just have to call on his name and understand that he holds all power. Um, sometimes we, we get this picture that um, like uh, Satan and, and God are, are you know, equal forces um, facing off against each other, but it's uh, quite, it's not, that's not, not even really close to being true that because God is all powerful, he holds the victory, um, he holds creation in his hands, he has no rivals. Um, the Satan's, it seems like Satan's prevailing for a while, but um, it's all going to be for his glory in the end. He will ultimately destroy Satan. We know that um, when we understand that, uh, you know, that's how we walk in victory. We know that we're, um, though we struggle for a while, we are fighting a defeated enemy. And so, um, you know, Jesus Christ has already given us victory. And so that's a huge part of it. Um, but it says in Psalms 121, you know, that where we look to uh, the mountains where our help comes from, our help comes from uh, the maker of heaven and earth, the Lord Jesus Christ, or, um, you know, Yahweh. But um, it also says he will not allow our foot to, sl to slip. Uh, protector of Israel will not sleep or slumber. He protects our coming and our going both now and forever. So that's an awesome promise of God right there, that he protects our coming uh, both now and forever, that nothing's going to happen to us that he's not aware of. He's sovereign. He's present. Um, that our life is in his hand. He sustains our life. Nothing's going to happen to us that um, he's, he's not aware of. And so that is just greatly reassuring. You know, it even says in another psalm that human help is worthless. And yeah, sure, he, you know, humans, he can use humans to help us, but it just means that ultimately our lives are in God's hands and our, our help comes from him. You know, salvation comes from him. You know, it says in, um, when Jesus is talking to Peter, he says, um, he calls Peter Cephas, which means rock, and he says, uh, on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And likewise, he, he says in Matthew um, 28, he says, All power and authority are given to me. And so he has given all power and authority to us, his people, the sheep of his pasture, and those who love him and are called according to his purpose. To He's given us that power and authority to walk in it. And when we walk in it, you know, um, we, uh, we become the light that shines in the darkness, the light that... Uh, that cannot be overcome. And so uh, it says in John 15, you know, that Jesus is the true vine, we are the branches. And so as long as we remain in him and, and he in us, uh, we will bear much fruit. When we, when we walk in that, when we walk in that power and authority, uh, when we walk in that relationship with Jesus, um, guided by the Holy Spirit, we will bear fruit for the kingdom, we will take back territory, uh, we will prevail over the power of the enemy, we will be able to declare the mandates of heaven to speak them into existence. You know, those things that aren't as though they were because they will be. Because um, God will be victor victorious in all things eventually. And so that is the first part of it. So we must stand firm. Um, like it says in Isaiah 7, 9. This is a, this one, I come back to this one a lot. It says, stand, stand firm in your faith or you will not stand at all. So we have to make up our mind that we are uh, sold out. That there's nothing uh, that can deter us, that can turn us back. We know we have the ultimate victory in Jesus Christ. And so we uh, run the race with endurance. Okay, so moving along to, to the armor of God, um, when we walk, you know, when we daily put on the armor of God, we become uh, weapons of mass destruction to the kingdom of, of darkness. And I know, like, like, usually dudes just usually, most dudes just love this passage, but uh, I think all hardcore believers love this passage. But I don't know, for, for me personally, just um, like one of the lies the enemy used to always tell me was that you know, you're small and, and, you know, no one notices you and you're never going to, um, you're small and fearful, you're never going to do anything. And so, I mean, the, I guess the, the devil will be always ruse the day that, um, that we come to Jesus because, um, just the Lord has completely turned that around. Uh, the Lord has given me a warring heart, you know, um, just to not to war physically because our, our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Uh, if we're fighting against flesh, we're fighting the wrong en enemy, but, um, you know, just we should delight to um, to advance the kingdom of heaven, and just like I said, I, ha I just have that I guess that passion just to walk in, uh, just to wreck the kingdom of darkness daily, just to hit the ground and know that Jesus has given us power and authority to take back the darkness. And so, when we put on the armor of God, when we understand that our help comes from Him, we just become, uh, you know, like um, was it Isaiah Saldivar always says, you're, you're like a nuclear missile, a nuclear warhead to the kingdom of darkness. And I always, I always say, like I said, I'm a WMD to the kingdom of darkness, but um, just, you know, the, um, 
but anyway, so let's just like dive in. Um, like I said, it says that our struggle is not against uh, uh, flesh and blood, but against spiritual powers, forces of evil, the devil and his demons. Uh, it says to daily put on the, the armor of God and to stand in his vast strength. Whose vast strength? Not ours, but his. Uh, to stand in his vast strength. And then there's different translations, but it says uh, after you've done everything, after you've done all you can do, uh, continue to stand. And after, you know, having done all to stand. And so when we can't do anything else, we just stand and we just continue to proclaim, to declare that, uh, you know, we have the victory in Jesus and Jesus will be victorious. And so we start with the belt of truth, you know, the belt of truth. Um, in, in like Roman, Paul has, when Paul's talking about this passage, he's talking about Roman armor, but the belt in Roman armor was uh, like the kind of the anchor of the armor that everything was strapped into the belt. So it was the anchor of the Roman armor, but our anchor is the Holy Spirit. Uh, this is the Holy Spirit guides us into all truth. Uh, and it says that in John uh, 16, 13, you know, when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. And then also, you know, it says in James 1, 5, that those who lack wisdom uh, should ask God and God will uh, grant wisdom to us and give generously to us without finding fault. And so we just have to have that uh, relationship with the Holy Spirit to where we're constantly in communion with the Holy Spirit asking you know in every situation uh, you know how to uh, move forward in that situation just to be in, in constant uh, like I said com communication and also just intercession just listening uh, for the voice of God and how to proceed and you know the Holy Spirit will always um, you know always guide us in the truth the Holy Spirit uh, allows us to walk in uh, the righteousness that God gave us, the Holy Spirit will convict us of sin, that will keep us upright, you know, we will press, we press, we'll press on uh, under the power of the Holy Spirit. It's the Spirit moving through us that, um, you know, changes the atmosphere when we agree with the mandates of heaven, speak them uh, over, over people. So we are empowered by the Holy Spirit in this life, and, and that's, how, that's how we do this walk. And so moving along is the next step to the... Um, belt of truth is uh, the breastplate of righteousness. Uh, the breastplate of righteousness is, um, you know, it says in 2 Corinthians, I mean, that protects our, our chest, right? The, it protects our heart, the breastplate. But um, it says in 2 Corinthians 5.21 that he, Jesus, who knew no sin, became sin, that, that we may become the righteousness of God. So it's not of our power, nothing we did, but because of Jesus' sacrifice, his death, his resurrection, and his victory over uh, sin and death that we have become the righteousness of God. And it says in James 5, you know, that uh, those, that the righteous, the prayer of the righteous per person availeth much. And so we can go before God in righteousness. We can go boldly before his throne with our request. Um, and God has given us, um, you know, Jesus has given us his righteousness. He has made us righteous by his blood. And so we just have to walk in that to get up daily, you know, and um, just ask, you know, the Lord to examine our hearts and, and our minds um, to find no offensive way in us, um, just to allow us to, to, to walk in righteousness. And um, there was something else there I done forgot it. Give me a second. Well, anyways, maybe it'll come back to me. But uh, 1 Peter 3.12 says, um, you know, that his face is um, turned towards the righteous once again um, we're, we're not righteous of our own accord but because of Jesus so his face turned towards us and his ears are open to our request uh, conversely that um, you know whenever we um, are, are caught in um, wickedness or, or whenever we have sin in our life that creates a wall it says this in Isaiah 59 that his, his face is set against us that it creates a wall between us cuts off that connection with the Holy Spirit and so that's why we should know when we're walking in the fear of God, we know uh, we have nothing to hide. We, we know that our walls are continually before God. And so we, are very op we should be very open and honest about sin. When we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Um, but, you know, it says, um, you know, we should just have that prayer in our heart in the Psalms. It's one, one of the Psalms that uh, may my, heart, my uh, minds and my heart's meditation be pleasing to you. Um, and... and the, once again, the spirit of truth allows us to walk in that righteousness um, that Jesus gave us. And so, 
Uh, moving on, um, the third part of the armor is that our feet have to be fitted with the readiness of the gospel of peace or the sandals of uh, the gospel of peace. It's um, worded a few di different ways in other versions, but basically it's just our footwear. Um, it says in Isaiah 72, nope, 72, that doesn't exist. <laughs> uh, Isaiah 52, that, um, you know, blessed are the feet of those uh, who, who come bringing the good news. Um, that's what we are, right? We carry the good news of, you know, of you know, all creation, uh, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, that there is no other name under heaven but whereby we must be saved. And so we bring that good news. So we have to be ready to go, first of all. Um, and we also have to be uh, submitted, you know, and sent when we're sent in his will. Um, he will accomplish every plan and purpose he has uh, for us when we're, uh, you know, called according to his purpose and, and walking in it. Um, it says Psalms 84.11. I love Psalms 84 is one of my favorites, but um, it says in Psalms 84.11 that the Lord God is a sun and a shield. Uh, he bestows favor and honor, and no good thing does he withhold from those whose walk is righteous. And so, um, once again, we are righteous. Um, God has made us blameless by his blood. And so we have his favor, and we need to just be submitted to his will and ask where he's sending us now. You know, sometimes he sends us to Zambia to preach. Uh, sometimes he, you know, he might have us talking to our neighbor. He might just at our job yeah, have missions and assignments for us. It says in Isaiah 22, 22 that um, he holds the key of David and that any door he opens um, that no man can shut and any door that he shuts no man can open and so he opens and closes the door he gives us favor he uh, propels us forward sends us forth in his purposes you know to fulfill the great commission and so uh, you know when we, when we move in God's will he will achieve every plan and, and purpose of his will you know it says throughout scripture who can stop him you know nothing no one can stop uh, what, he, what he wants to accomplish so um, I don't know that's just an awesome thought that that he can't be stopped um, Okay, continuing on. So the next one, I mean, there obviously every piece of the armor is crucial and needed. and um, But the, the shield of faith, I'm going to spend a little bit more time on because I just want to talk about um, the role of faith, I guess. There's a the huge, um, obviously faith has a huge part in our walk with God. Um, but the shield of faith, you know, it says that by uh, wielding the shield of faith, we extinguish the fiery darts of the enemy. Uh, the fiery darts being, you know, just these... Um, attacks on our faith that he tries to bring. He tries to extinguish our faith. He tries to get us to doubt uh, God's goodness. He tries to have us doubt that, that God is for us, and um, he tries to get us to doubt God's promises. Uh, but we know, you know, we walk by faith, not sight. Second Corinthians 5-7, it's not just a fun thing we say, but it's supposed to be, you know, just, um, just you know, firmly planted in our heart and mind. You know, we walk by faith, not sight. We're supposed to, you know, not learn by experience. We're supposed to learn by faith. We're, well, not even learn by faith, but we're supposed to just trust him, take him at his word because he's faithful. You know, the Israelites, when they um, crossed over into the promised land, uh, when they crossed the Jordan, they were commanded to take memorial stones. They build a memorial to God and to worship. Um, and then it says in the Psalms that they're um, to always tell the next generation of his wonderful works so they wouldn't forget. And so just... We have to have this lifestyle, this habit of constantly testifying to what God's done um, and understanding, you know, that our very life is a gift from God. Our very life is sustained by God just to have this attitude of, of gratitude, just of respect, and just being grateful for every moment. But to know that all things are possible at all times with God, nothing will be impossible with God. It says, you know, his people, uh, greater things we will do, you know, um, through Jesus Christ. It says, you know, that, um, uh, that everything, the things you ask in my name I will do so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And he's given us this power and authority so we have to walk in it, um, have to declare, uh, declare it and speak it, you know. And so um, we have to understand the things that he's done before he will do again. Um, that every, um, you know, those, once again, those uh, who are called according to his purpose and who love him, uh, all things work together for their good. Um, you know, it says in Genesis 50, when I'm talking about Joseph, but it, it holds truth for us that er everything the enemy means for evil, uh, God will turn for good. Um, understanding also John 5:17 that says, 
God is always working, and I too, Jesus, are always working. So to know, understand, they're always moving and working and interceding on our, our behalf. Um, it says in Second Timothy two thirteen that even if we uh, are faithless, God remains faithful. Um, he cannot deny Himself. It's just a measure. I mean, it's just um, it's just who He is. He is just faithful. Um, so we have to have that measure of faith because it says the indecisive person. Uh, the person who asks and then doubts should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. So we have to pray knowing and expecting him to move because he is faithful. And then um, another part, I mean, I want to go to Daniel 3 here. We're talking about uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Um, so they were, you know, fixing to be thrown in a blazing furnace. And they just declared outright, you know, that our God uh, has the power to, de to deliver us from your hand. But even if he doesn't, they had already made up their mind that even if God didn't do this thing for them, that they had already seen, they had already heard, they already knew their God was king and Lord of all. Um, they were not going to recant. They were not going to uh, change their mind. And so they said, even if he doesn't, we will not uh, deny our faith. We will not uh, bow down to your, to your lowercase g gods, your fake gods. And sometimes, you know, we have to uh, lay down this perceived right we have to understand to uh, think we know what it should look like how God should answer us and what way he should answer us but we know that all things work together so even when we can't see it we don't walk by circumstances we don't walk by feeling uh, we're not held down by the things that have happened to us the things that have happened to us before what we're in currently in the valley we know that all things work together for those who love him and are called according to his purpose um, we know that Thanks be to God who has given us the victory in Jesus Christ, who has uh, given us victory over sin and death in Jesus Christ. So default uh, position for a Christian is victory. I mean, literally, death is our greatest victory. So we should not fear death. Um, you know, we should fear God alone. But, um, and so the way it looked just doesn't matter how it looks because we know he's working and interceding on our behalf at all times. So, um, you know, um, when Jesus is talking to Thomas, he says, uh, you believe because you've seen, but blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. You know, those who have faith that don't have to see to believe, that know that Jesus is worthy of our trust, um, that are walking by faith. So we know that his plans are to prosper us and not to harm us through Jer Jeremiah 29. We know that no weapon formed against us will prosper. And so we just continue to walk in that default position for a Christian is victory. You know, every day we wake up, uh, we're one day closer to heaven. That should get us, <laughs> sorry, that should get us a little bit excited. I mean, if that doesn't get us excited, then are we really living for the kingdom to come? Or are we living for this world? I mean, so we should, when we're walking in that, when we understand that, we should have an indomitable spirit. We should be uh, um, inconquerable, unconquerable. I think it's inconquerable, um, you know. And even um, just another person I think of here is Stephen. Um, Stephen, you know, uh, he he didn't uh, he was not delivered from from the the I mean, the, at least the way we see it, he was not delivered from the, the hand of the enemy. That he was literally murdered by religious people that didn't want to listen to um, him speaking under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. But he did not recant. He did not draw back because um, he had his eyes set above. I mean, literally before he. Um, Fell, it says he fell asleep, um, so I don't know if he was literally, if he, like, passed away or if he just fell asleep before he was killed by, by stoning. But anyways, he had this vision, and he saw, well, I don't know if it's a vision, but he literally saw Jesus at the, standing at the right hand of God. And so he did not draw back. You know, it cost him his life. And so that's where we need to be. Like, you know, obviously that's not everyone's destiny. We're not all martyrs, but... You know, sometimes our, our faith is going to cost us, and so we have to be willing to pay that price to be sold out to understand that it's worth it and, and that we have final victory in Jesus. But anyways, uh, moving along, there is the helmet of salvation. Um, you know, this what does the helmet do, does do? It protects our mind, protects our thoughts. Um, and so, you know, it says in Romans 8, 3, uh, let God be true and every man be a liar. And so, and I, I alluded to this previously, yeah, sure, sometimes uh, we can speak truly, you know, men and women can speak truly, 
But if we speak anything or have any thought that conflicts with the word of God, which was spoken in truth with authority, that we stand on the word of God because, um, you know, he has the first and last word. And so we have to understand that when we want to know our identity, we don't ask people, we don't look to the world, we look to the word of God because he says who we are and he has the first and last word. And then also, you know, the helmet of salvation is knowing that our salvation is secured. Um, it cannot be torn away from us, you know. It, so it says in John 10, 28, um, that, you know, Jesus says, My Father is greater for all than all, and no one can be snatched from his hand. And so just knowing that we have uh, final victory in him, you know, in Philippians 4, it says rejoice always. And then it says again, rejoice um, so we should just always be, um, you know, like that, knowing we have that victory, the joy of the Lord should be our strength. And um, 2 Corinthians 10 uh, is about, you know, once again about like just the battle for the mind, warfare. Uh, every, every thought that um, goes against what God spoke, the tr a truth or a promise that God spoke, we take that thought captive. And we know that God's word uh, reigns true and, and is um, eternal and, um, you know, is what we stand on and so that is and and I guess that's well I forget where I was going there I'm sorry um, but anyway so just moving on uh, sort of the spirit which is the Word of God you know we have to build our life on on his word um, it um, you know Romans uh, Romans uh, I'm sorry not Romans Isaiah 55 says that you know um, uh, God's God's word is it goes forth from where he sends it and it accomplishes what he sends it to do It does not return empty and void and so it's knowing that his word has power in it um, It's not just a book. It is his promises hold true. So we speak his promises We agree with them. We speak them over ourselves. We pray them over ourselves and others We speak them over others and uh, his word has power and it goes forth and, and these things will be accomplished so you know we need to always have his word in our heart and in our mind um you know um another part oh you know i want to go back for a second because i i thought of what i was thinking of in a about the helmet of salvation but just to say, i think of romans eight thirty one where it says um just that if god is for us who can be against us it's just knowing that we have final victory in jesus christ and um you know it also says that we are more than conquerors in jesus christ um so uh, we just we have power and authority and we have ultimate victory but anyways going back to uh, sort of the spirit so we're just supposed to build our life on his word you know it says we keep his word in our hearts so we may not sin against him um, we also when we have his word in our heart um, we know who we are in christ um, our identity comes from him and we are rooted we are rooted firmly in that when we're rooted in jesus christ you know that foundation cannot be shaken um, it talks about in Romans 12 how, uh, you know, he do not be conformed any longer to the pattern of this world, but be renewed in your mind. And so we become renewed in mind as we read the truth, God's word, as we put that into our mind. Just these falsehoods and these, um, you know, these strongholds and these things that raise themselves above the knowledge of God, they're shaken loose. And uh, these eternal truths are just planted in our, in our mind. And when these things take you know, going from our mind to our heart, it brings that transformation in our lives. But also, um, in regards to the sort of the spirit, it says, you know, in Hebrews 4.12, that uh, God's word is living and active. Um, it divides joint and marrow, soul and spirit, that it judges the hearts and attitudes. I mean, the hearts. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. And so his book, it talks about, you know, it says it's alive. Like, literally, when you read the book, uh, it's like the book is reading you. Um, you know, as we're reading it, we often feel conviction. Sometimes we shove that down, and often we don't read it. Um, you know, I, when I was a young Christian, I would feel conviction, and I didn't like it because it was, it was pointing out my sin, and I wasn't ready to, you know, break up with the sin yet. I wasn't ready to lay it down, and so I would read it, and you know, it would um, I put, you know, put put the book up because it was, uh, it was I was feeling conviction, and I, I didn't like it at that point. I wasn't ready, but um. So, it, it, you know, it judges our hearts it, um, when we are willing to uh, submit, it, it, you know, um, it, it, we are cleansed of all unrighteousness when we're ready to confess these things. Um, but the book is living and active. Um, 
also says in Numbers twenty three nineteen. This is another favorite. I always come back to that. Um, you know, God is not a man that he lie, uh, not a son of man that he changes his mind. He does not speak and not act. He does not promise and not fulfill. So every promise in his book, uh, in the Word of God, holds true. And he will, you know, if he hasn't, or the ones he hasn't um, already fulfilled, he will ultimately fulfill. It is a certainty, and we can bank on it. Um, so um, that is the word, the, you know, the, the armor of God. We have to, I, like, you know, I often pray a prayer daily where I just go through the armor of God, and I pray it over my, you know, over my life, and, um, and it just go through the various pieces, and just like, um, it's like this spiritual, or act of like putting them on and, and donning these things and, and asking God to help me walk in it but it's powerful and I recommend you can you, know, you can read through the book and, and try it and pray it over yourself because there is power in it um, it says in the next part of this I'm going to go to 1 Peter 5 8 but it says in 1 Peter 5 8 to be alert be sober because the devil uh, roams around like a lion seeking whom he may devour and I spoke on this previously but uh, you know, lions when they're hunting, who do they seek? They seek uh, the weak, they seek the sick, they seek the vulnerable and, and the isolated, those who, the easy kill, right? Um, and so the next part of this is we have to walk in community. That is a huge part of being a believer. Yeah, sure, we can be a believer and watch our church services from home, but um, this this act of, um, you know, being a believer is meant to be done together you know we're supposed to be the body of Christ built together um, all the parts of the body uh, being for his service and so um, it says not to fors forsake uh, the gathering of the saints not to forsake uh, fellowship but to uh, spur each other on to love and good deeds and all the more as we see the day approaching and then um, well, the next part of this is um, just you know once again, it talks about in Ecclesiastes 7 how if two are walking and one falls in a pit, um, you know, if he's by himself, he's, he's in dire straits. But if he is with someone else, he has someone to lift him out of the pit. Um, in that passage, it's talking about literally a, a literal pit, a hole in the ground. But this doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, um, physical isolation. It can also be mental isolation. If we are um, isolating ourselves physically, um, if we don't have someone speaking life into us encouraging us we can get into a dark place we can start to believe the lies of the enemy we don't have anything to uh, test these things against you know we're supposed to sharpen each other to help each other and when we're isolating sometimes you know we can fall into a pit mentally where we're starting to believe the lies of the enemy so that's why we need someone always to uh, equip us to help us encourage us and when we're believing the lies of the enemy to speak life over us to speak God's truth over us and to, you know, just to break the, the lies of the enemy over us. Um, and so that's why community is uh, required. Um, you know, if we're to do this life effectively, uh, we're supposed to have that community to have all things in common. Okay, the next part is prayer. This is another huge one. Um, I mean, like, again, all they all matter, but prayer is huge. I mean, we, in prayer, intercession, we go before um, the Father and appeal to the one who works on our behalf and so you know it talks about Luke 18 um, yeah Jesus tells this parable but before he tells the parable it has like a little like brief intro and it says then Jesus told a parable on the need for them to pray always and never become discouraged and the parable was um, you've probably heard it but that it was about the um, the widow and the unjust judge and how this widow goes before the unjust judge and, and demands of him, give me uh, justice against my adversary. And the, the, it says the unjust judge that doesn't fear God or respect man. Um, but finally, because this widow is, uh, pesters him so much, he finally gives in and says, you know, before this, this, this lady's wearing me out, so I'm just going to give her justice. So even though I don't fear man um, or fear God, I mean fear God or respect man, I'm going to give this lady justice. And then God says, how much more will your heavenly father who acts on your behalf, who delights in giving you good gifts, how much more will he uh, swiftly grant justice to those who call on him? And it says when he comes back, will he find faith like this on earth? Just to the faith of those who who pray until something happens, to pray until the blessings of heaven uh, are poured out on them you know, and, and others until that healing comes. Those who, who pray and intercede and never give up. 
that know that he is always faithful and he is always working on our behalf. And so we have to have that mindset that, um, and it says in Romans 12, you know, to be patient in affliction, persistent in, refer- in, uh, persistent in prayer, and to give thanks always. First Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 says to pray unceasingly, to give thanks in everything. Um, and so it's like a, it's a, um, it's a repeating theme, um, you know, in this understanding that though we're in this world, you know, it says the world's under the power of the evil one, that we are actually seated in heavenly places uh, with Jesus who intercedes on our behalf, that his promises are yes and amen. And so we just have to pray and continue to pray, expecting to receive. Um, it says in Romans 8 that uh, Jesus searches our hearts and uh, knows the Spirit's mindset. Um, and he always, you know, that he's constantly um, interceding on uh, for the saints according to the will of God. And then um, another one of my favorite verses is uh, Hebrews 7.25. And it just says that, um, that Jesus always lives. He's at the right hand of God, and he always lives. Uh, to intercede for us that just that you've got Jesus you know our Savior interceding for us day and night and um, but it then um, I want to st- stop here quickly and mention uh, briefly Daniel 10 I think well I don't know if it's Daniel 10 it's in Daniel <laughs> but um it talks about how you know um, Daniel had uh, pray he goes to God in, in prayer about you know uh, being delivered um, from his situation and the angel finally comes to give a reply to Daniel, but it says, you know, that the first day that Daniel made up his mind to humble himself and to appeal to God, that God heard him and had an answer, but just that this angel had to uh, prevail against, like, these spiritual forces of evil that it talks about in Ephesians 6 to, to come and bring Daniel his answers. So sometimes, you know, what exactly uh, granting justice swiftly looks like that's not ours to know, but it's just to know that God will uh, answer. He will, uh, you know, he will bring forth, um, you know, he will answer uh, the, the, our request, and he, he will do it swiftly. And so um, the next part of, um, I guess the, the last part of this is just, um, just to praise, just to understand, just to live a lifestyle of praise, um, just to declare His goodness always, to walk in gratitude, um, to walk in joy, that, that joy of the Lord that is our strength, to know that we have ultimate and final victory. So we, we just praise, you know, praise Him in the morning, praise Him in the evening, praise Him when things are bad, praise Him when things are good, because He is worthy of it. Um, it says, you know, if we don't praise Him, the rocks are going to cry out and praise Him. Um, everything is ultimately for His glory. Every tongue will uh, confess and every knee will bow that Jesus Christ is Lord. And when we praise, um, we are declaring the things that aren't as, as though they were. That, uh, we are, you know, like dec- declaring the Lord's victory until he returns. Um, I want to read a passage from First Peter here. This is an excellent one, but it's just about that mindset and that lifestyle that we're supposed to walk in. So this is First Peter chapter 1, um, starting in verse 3. And it says, He has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, uncorrupted, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by God's power through faith for a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. You rejoice in this, though now for a short time you have had to be distressed by various trials so that the genuineness of your faith may be tested. Uh, more valuable than gold, which perishes, perishes though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. You love him, though you have not seen him. And though not seeing him now, you believe in him and rejoice with inexpressible and glorious joy because you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. And so, you know, these trials and tribulations that come to us in this life, they, they test us. Um, the genuineness, the genuineness of our faith. Uh, I knew a, a gentleman, um, you know, that l- lost his uh, his wife at a pretty early age. You know, she was pretty young. I think she was just in her thirties. And at the funeral, you know, this this was the funeral of a believer, so it was really an awesome thing because there was such joy and celebration at this funeral because we knew 
that she had final victory in Jesus Christ, that her pain was over. She was in the arms of Jesus, and, you know, she, like I said, death is victory in Jesus. Um, but this, the response of this man at the funeral, you know, he should have been, uh, like, when we look at it from a fleshly or worldly perspective, we just are thinking this man should be broken, you know. Um, but he had his hands raised, praising the Lord, uh, thanking him. You know, he was gr grateful for the time he had, but he was just praising the Lord because he knows, you know, he has that same victory and um, just he was worthy of praise and it was just a beautiful moment. And, you know, I actually told him later that that was real faith. Um, anybody can praise God when, and when everything is great, when everything is going according to our plan. But um, when it's not, you know, when things are hard, um, that's when our faith is tested. That's when we're in the fire and we, um, you know, if we're not sold out, a lot of times we bail and uh, we have to be able to finish. We have to be able to finish the race. And so we have to be sold out, you know, like uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, even if he doesn't, we're not going to turn back. We're not going to honor. We're not going to worship your, uh, your lowercase g God. And so, um, like it says, in you know that often the worshipers and when the Israelites went to battle, the worshipers went first, first before they even had victory, um, just praising God, and, and it was just it was just like the way they did things. Um, but like I said, when we are in that lifestyle of, of praise um, and worship, it's just um, it, you know in Isaiah sixty one it says that. Uh, Jesus has given us a crown of beauty for ashes. He has given us festive oil instead of mourning. And instead of the spirit of heaviness, he has given us praise. We are beings made for worship. We are made to praise God. And so when we do that, it's like we're prevailing over the enemy, despite what it looks like now. When it looks like the enemy is prevailing, we know we all have final victory in Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ has given us victory over sin and death. And so we just declare that. And so basically, in summation, like I said, these things, when you walk in, that knowledge of God, fearing God, keeping His commands, and walking in that blessing. Uh, you put on the armor of God daily. Um, you do not forsake the, the gathering of the saints, but you walk in that community, in that fellowship, uh, the strength in numbers, the, the cord of three strands. And when we're in that um, constant lifestyle of prayer and intercession to the one who holds our life in His hands, the one who appeals for us, the one who fights for us, and then when we just walk in that, just that lifestyle of gratitude and praise, where we're always rejoicing because we know we have final victory in Jesus. So when you do these things, um, not only do are you renewed um, and just constantly being transformed by the Holy Spirit, but you are, and um, obviously we also walk in that power and authority, knowing that when we speak things and when we agree with the Word of God, that things shift, that the atmosphere shifts when we speak His words over people. And so when we walk in that power and authority, we know we lay hands on people and they are made well. We know that we can lay hands on people and demons leave. We can, um, you know, the name of Jesus is above sickness is, uh, you know, the name of Jesus sends the demons fleeing. And so we have all power and authority in Jesus, uh, all power and authority to trample all the power of the enemy. And so when we walk in these things, we become uh, weapons of mass destruction to the enemy. And so I just want to thank you for listening. And I hope um, this encouraged you and blessed you in some way, as always. If you have any questions or comments, I would love to hear them. Um, I just want to say, I guess, just thank you for listening. Uh, be blessed. And until next time, I love you guys. Take care. Bye.